Oh, yeah. No, the fifth one is like super aggressive and it's going to annoy the crap out of people. Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off-Road Podcast and I'm Big Z. <laughs> I forgot who I was for a second. <laughs> I'm just going to stare at you and uh, be perplexed. Is that just because you can't see me because you don't got your glasses on or is that... <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. I'm Ian with Full Throttle Battery. And we're back for the Holiday Gift Guide, our third annual the, gift guide. The gi- gift guide? Are we doing like digital gift guide? Is that what you're doing? Putting up on the website? All dialed in? Freaking links? Prices? Yeah, so along with today, uh, we'll have the content and everything on the website for you to go peruse the links and the pictures of what we are talking about today uh, on SideBySideGuys.com. Uh, you can also visit our social media. We'll have posts there that you can follow in the link in bio and all that Heck crap. yeah. You're all over it. Producer extraordinaire. Nice hat. <laughs> Shreddy life, baby. <laughs> So uh, every year we get together, we put together a list of five picks from me, five picks from Ian, and uh, kind of go over them and, and how they could benefit you in, in p- buying a gift for your loved one or friend or partner or whoever it is that's involved with the UTV off-road experience. Uh, these things all directly tie into the UTV experience and um, how much fun you can have in these machines. And our picks are concrete locks. Your wife, husband, children will love it. This is not debatable. Uh, Pinnacle brand products. Um, just do as we say. Pretty much make, nothing we make say. Make Christmas easy. Pretty much nothing we say on this list will be uh, an upset in the uh, in the stock. Hundred percent. So uh, yeah, we're not going to waste too much time on this episode. I'm going to get right to the point. The whole point is these gift guides. So uh, do you want to start it off? Or you want me to start it off? Ah, uh, you go for it, man. All right. The first thing I'm going to bring up is the Leatherman Signal Multi Tool. As a guy that um, loves to tinker with stuff and and get things done on the trail or in the shop or in the garage, uh, having something in your pocket or on your waist uh, is always a good idea. The Leatherman, um, even if your partner or friend has um, you know a pocket knife or a tool or whatever, there's nothing that kind of um, replaces something that has all the answers and solutions in one in one grab. So the, the Leatherman Signal. Uh, is a one-handed tool. Uh, you can pretty much do anything you need to with one hand. Um, insert joke here. And uh, the nice thing about this uh, version of the multi-tool, because they have thousands of these versions of these things, right? Uh, it has all the different blades and and awls and and saws and all that stuff in it. But uh, the uh, the multi-tool ha- also has a striker in it, so you can start a campfire out on the trail. Um, it has a sharpener built into it, so if your blade gets dull, you can sharpen it and hone it up real quick. It has a carabiner built into it, so you can hook it onto your belt, your loops, your uh, the cage, whatever you have going on. And um, having something that just answers the, the need uh, on the trail or in the garage when you need it is always nice to not have to walk around and find a tool. I carry a variation of that with me, probably deploy it about two to three times a day when we're in the mountains. So very handy. Yeah. And I'm always using my knife or my pliers or whatever, like on a daily basis. So it's, it's kind of nice to have something just right there on your hip. So, right. Uh, what's your, uh, first pick? Well, number one is a Baja designs rock lights. These bad boys retail at about 64 to 65 bucks, give or take. They're insanely bright. And when you say rock light, people associate it with an actual rock light, but you can position this thing anywhere. You can use it as a dome light. You can use it as a, uh, um, I mean, you can honestly mount these things in the bed of a truck. Um, I've got a set. They're incredibly handy. They're ridiculously bright. They're made in America. They're affordable. Go buy it. Don't debate me. Yeah, the Baja uh, designs always, every single product they make is, you know. Pinnacle. Is, is an awesome product with an awesome warranty and awesome customer service. And uh, you pretty much know that you're going to buy it once and not worry about it ever again. For sure. Yeah, the uh, the hours, we could probably dive in real quick and look at the actual projected hours on how long these things will run. But they are uh, they are crazy durable, too. Like, I, I've blasted these things direct, pressure washer more times than I could count. They keep functioning, you know, because the, the, the rock light's actually a variation of uh, I'm sorry the dome light that they make with an actual onboard switch is a variation of the rock light there's it's basically a rock light with a switch in it and I had that for quite a few years and they are solid as a rock and like I said ridiculously bright 
and uh, they come with a lifetime warranty. So there you go. Uh, if the product ever fails, they're going to replace it for you. Very, very low draw on them too. So if you're one of those guys that like to fire those things up and let it sit for a while, uh, you're not going to put a real big stress on your battery. But I can tell you this, man, you got mechanical issues out on the trail and stuff and you need, uh, you need light to kind of attend to the task at hand, whether it be a belt or whether it be an axle or something like that. It's kind of nice having stuff like that on board. And when we, you know, went on the BDR trails, uh, one of the first things I did was put rock lights all the way around the razor. And, and one of the reasons for that is when you're in the middle of the night and you're just setting up camp or if you're trying to replace a belt or if you're trying to fix a tie rod or something, having the rock light on, providing you scene lighting around all the components that you're touching is kind of a nice, nice side effect. Absolutely. So those are rated at uh, about 400 lumen uh, in white. Uh, they come with the roll bar mounts and all that stuff, 65 bucks. Um, this isn't your cheap Chinesium uh, $12 light. So Great stocking stuffer. Yeah, perfect. Always make sure to buy more than one unless it's a cab light. Yeah, the, so the 64 bucks is, uh, you know, that's for one. So to, to kit out your RGR or something like that, you're going to be looking at that times four. Or if you just wanted to use it as a dome light, interior light, or, or a cargo light, 64 bucks. Boom. Yep. Happy happy wife, happy husband, happy son, happy daughter. And they work great as cab lights because, I mean, I put a couple in our in our cab and it makes it so much better to have. And actually, people don't realize if you put more than one source light, it's not as harsh on your eyes, too. So sure. um, I put two in the cab uh, above each pass, uh, each drive or occupant, and uh, it makes it a world of difference. So it's awesome. Killer. Uh, my next uh, pick is the Razorback Off-Road Rough Rider Padded Heat Shields. These are uh, roughly an inch or two thick. Uh, they're like a, a foam pad with a weatherproof uh, casing around it that goes in the bed of your UTV. Um, they have multiple styles available for uh, Razor 900s, 1000 XPs, uh, and thus also the XP turbos. Um, even the C-Force uh, or the CF Moto Z-Force, uh, they have one for that, uh, as well as the Canon Mavericks and Polaris Generals. The Generals are a little bit more expensive because the bed on that is way more massive than those other models. But uh, the idea behind these things is that uh, you're one insulating the bed from the heat that's being generated from the motor um, and so you're reducing the heat going into the bed if you have a cooler or an animal back there you don't want them to be suffering from the heat and and, and expiring which, are, which from gets that. substantial right yeah especially on like a turbo model where right. where it just b builds up back there um, but these products go in the back of your uh, rig uh, for one it makes it easier to uh, block the heat but it also makes it more comfortable for your furry friends if you're somebody that takes your animals out with you um, and want them to have a comfortable place to sit um, and, and do their travels yeah take a look at the link too if you want to go to the home page for these things you get to see our buddy chuck from razorback off-road attacking these things with a propane torch and it's pretty awesome. <laughs> i didn't even realize it was on there oh yeah yeah he's down there doing uh yeah, doing some testing it. so yeah. uh they're chuck's, heat chuck's not afraid to get his hands dirty we we actually have worked with chuck on a few things and i actually did a destination polaris episode with him and a great company great family and uh, he went out of his way to help us out on our Idaho BDR trail right. to give us a destination to to land and, and utilize even some of its flatbeds. Oh, that was beyond clutch. Yeah. Yeah, that, that bailed us out something fierce. It was very, very difficult to find something local to get ourselves unloaded, and he came through like a champ. Yep. So shout out to Chuck. And uh, if you're interested in one of these uh, bed covers, um, they do range from 150 to 180, I think. So let me just double check that. I got in my notes right here. 150 to 190 for the um, the general one uh, because it's about twice the size of the other ones. But great solution uh, for keeping your cooler uh, cool and your dog's paws from melting off. So what's your uh, next uh, pick? Mine is the Full Throttle FT410. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey. This, you, this, this episode's not sponsored by Full Throttle. Or kind of. <laughs> Don't make me pull receipts. <laughs> yeah, so the Full Throttle FT410 is a, a thin plate pure lead battery. It is the most universal footprint that Full Throttle has in its entire arsenal. It'll fit in everything. Virgin, I mean it. It'll fit in everything from a Pioneer to an X3 to an RZR. You can mount it sideways. The only orientation that batteries do not like being mounted is upside down. 
You could use this thing as a boat anchor on a trolling motor. You could use this thing in any capacity you want. It's incredibly durable. You can shake it. You can beat on it. You can just freaking destroy it. I've actually shot one with a 454 Casol and it still started up my lawnmower. These things are crazy durable. So I want to say retail on those bad boys. Oh boy, I should know this, but I think it's roughly about, <laughs> you, you can use it, you know, you'll see it online for roughly about $199. Uh, for a power sport application, it's a two year free replacement, which is a lot in a power sport application. So the nice thing about uh, these batteries, we've talked them up forever and obviously you sell them so you know a lot about them and and, and are going to be pro uh these batteries but the nice thing about them is that they're a sealed agm battery they're not going to leak they're not going to require maintenance and filling up and and all that kind of stuff like you said you can mount them everywhere the casing on them is super durable it's a lot more thick than um, you would find on like an oem battery or maybe um, a local tire store battery or something like that yeah. um and again it comes with two different post mount options i think one on top one on the side yeah we've got automotive posts on there and a flush mount what's called an m eight and then you can mount directly to the top of the terminal right to the top of the lead and the automotive posts are all brass because brass as everybody knows conducts electricity a lot better um, but they are removable if you don't want to use them yeah and, and uh, they work great especially with just the oem clamps on the wires and everything they just go right straight to those posts and the nice thing about the 410 is it's a second battery option for like the xp models uh, of the razors there's a little cubby next to the battery and next to your fuse block and everything, yeah. and it fits right in there. Yeah, the, the you, you're mentioning the razors. The razors, we can actually fit a bigger full throttle battery in there. But if you wanted right. to, we could use both of these in a sequence to do a uh, to do a dual kit. This battery right here would start my Cummins diesel, much less a 900 cc or a 925 or a thousand. And you're starting to see uh, the 560 and the 410 uh, model batteries kind of take over the dual battery uh, setups from all the different um, brands that are selling dual battery kits and everything. They used to put in odysseys and all those other different types types of batteries and now they're starting to replace them all with full throttle for obvious reasons the the main reason for that is uh, actually the chemistry you know i mean we can break it down to a science if you're interested in it you know the some of our competitors use a tin alloy plate which is great you can it's got uh, got the capacity to generate a lot of power we use lead calcium the lead calcium is very similar to what you see in deep cycle dna so when you di discharge this battery and you repeatedly discharge this battery it has the ability to recover itself so my next pick um, is the Boxo Tool Roll 2.0. <clears throat> uh, somebody around here has one of those. Maybe. Um, we actually featured the original version of this Tool Roll on the in initial episode in 2019 of our holiday picks um, as a gift guide item. Uh, since then, the kit's almost doubled in size. Um, is extremely uh, durable and, and high quality products. They have a, a great warranty, limited lifetime warranty on all the tools. Um, this kit retails for three eighty five, and if you know tools, you know that that's not exorbitant amount of money for a good tool kit. Um, you can easily spend that anywhere you go online for tools. Um, but it comes with everything you would basically need for most things. It comes with you know your your quarter inch and three eighths uh, ratchets. Comes with um you know your uh, universal wrench. It comes with your sockets, your uh, open end wrenches, pliers and screwdrivers and and allens and all that stuff. All in a convenient tool roll, uh, which is really nice because you can just lay it on the ground, open it up, and uh, the whole kit's exposed, and you can just grab whatever you need to. But it's not getting dirty because it's on the ground in a case. And then when you're done with it, you just roll it back up. Everything stays nice and clean in place and uh, goes back in the car. Yeah. I uh, Scout's honor. I swear to you, since I've gotten this tool roll, which is get, getting close to a year now, I have not opened my toolbox since. That's, I'm dead serious. Like it ha it covers so much. So right. I'm extremely happy with it, extremely durable. It's also, you have the ability to really get it into a, a small space, which is insanely handy. The and nice thing about this is it kind of, in most instances, will fit either like under a Can-Am seat or behind a seat or somewhere where it's convenient to just place it and not worry about it. For sure. You know, and you touched on it right off the bat. A lot of times when you go look up a tool roll online, you will see a, an empty tool roll and then you fill it with your existing tools. This comes totally equipped and it's probably got things in there that you'd never think that you might need and then you wind up needing it. So like I said, I since I've owned this thing, I have not opened another tool roll and I'm just crazy happy with it and the funny thing is it, it comes with a hammer and a lot of people are like i don't need a hammer in my tool bag i can vouch that a hammer comes in clutch sometimes <laughs> i've needed a hammer multiple times no doubt about it 
Um, so yeah, the uh, Boxo Tool Roll 2.0, new and improved uh, over the last year and a half, or I think since we did the initial uh, pick on that in 2019. Um, there are other options from other brands like Assault and other places um, for various different price points, but Boxo is really uh, kind of taking the, the lead in trying to provide a high quality tool uh, with a high quality components and uh, backing that up with a warranty. Yeah, I can actually tell you the last time I needed a hammer, I was in about 20 degree weather, my hands were frozen and I couldn't get the gray water cap off the RV. It was frozen on there. A little screwdriver, a little hammer tap, gray water cap comes right off. <laughs> so very handy. So uh, what would be your next pick, Mr. My next is the, uh, the Pro Eagle Phoenix Jack. The Pro Eagle Jack comes with an instruction manual, and I have no idea why. It is so unbelievably simple to use so unbelievably tough. I mean, I'm, I tell you, I, I joke around with these guys and make comments to them along the lines that their, their components and their hardware oftentimes make a job so easy because you, anybody can, anybody can attest to this. Sometimes it takes longer to get ready to do a job than it does to do the job. Pro Eagle is kind of one of those companies that really helps speed up that process. You just throw that bad boy under there. I've lifted, uh, I've lifted my X3. I've lifted my RZR more times to change tires, to do uh, basic mechanical, to get to just to get the car off the ground. It is, it is unbelievably handy. Great freaking company, great product. And the mounting options on this thing, you can mount it on your car. Um, there's pictures online, as you can see, you can mount it to roll bars. You can mount it to a lot of different, uh, it has a lot of different options in that capacity to where it's not intrusive. The jack itself is very, very light too, which is very handy. So this, uh, retails for three ninety nine, Um, and the nice thing about, um, this jack is that it's compact, it's lightweight. It's not like, um, a scissor jack where you're sitting there cranking on it all the time. It's not like, a uh, a big full, um, you know, hydraulic lift where you're sitting there carrying a, a big, heavy, massive piece of steel around in your car, weighing it down. Um, a lot of guys in the racing have started converting over to these because they're quick and easy and, um, you know, lightweight and, and compact. So they're a great option. Um, I think, uh, Wes on the BDR trip used it, um, a couple times, uh, when we had to do an axle uh, repair and a, and a couple other things. So, yeah, um, I lost a CV boot and a tire and that this equipment makes short work of it. And he wasn't running small tires either, so he was able to hit the suspension and get that thing up in the air For and sure. all that. Um, the The nice thing about we'll we'll go straight into your um, an, your next pick uh, just because it complements this one, and mine will complement each other as well. Um, your other pick for this was the power tank. Yeah, it's the uh, 20 ounce extra CO2 power tank bottle. I've had this in my kit for probably about eight months. I've used it to, because uh, it comes with a couple different nozzles, I've used it to blast out the clutches, to clean out the clutches. I've used it to lift the car. I've used it to air up tires countless times. And those are tires anywhere from a 33 or a 32 inch UTV tire up to a 37 inch truck tire. Uh, the exact amount of times that you could fill up a large truck style tire uh, is very, is very likely on their website, but much like the pro Eagle, they complement each other extremely well. They work with each other extremely well, but the, the, the compact nature of what you get for that tank, you know, and it, it keeps you from having to run onboard air. Onboard air is susceptible to damage via vibration. It's just another electrical component that's a stress on your, your, you know, your alternator or your stator or something like that, or your battery pack. It's just another option. You know, I'm not saying that an ARB dual tank or something like that wouldn't be a handy feature. You know, I, there, there's always nice to, as a matter of fact, when we go on some of these trips, well, a lot of times we plot for one guy to have electrical air and another guy to have CO2. Cause if there's one thing that we've found is that CO2 is not going to fail, but it's limited. <laughs> it'll run out. Though. Yeah, it'll run out at some point. And that's the only downfall that I've ever found regarding this equipment. It is, it's very durable and just insanely reliable. And, and I've seen people, I'm not going to put anybody on blast here, but we have seen people try to piece together a kit on Amazon that will do what power tank will do. And they'll say, well, I can piece something together that'll work just as good as that for X amount of dollars. They put it together and they get out on the trail and guess what? They're borrowing my equipment because it failed. It, right. it didn't work. You know, you, you go in and you start buying cheap components thinking that you're going to get a solution out of it. And it's not good if it doesn't fit or if it doesn't work for you, especially when you're 500 miles from any sort of resource. You know, I just, how many times have we talked about 
the peace of mind in buying something once. And the nice thing, so just so that everybody <clears throat> that's listening that may be not familiar with this whole setup uh, is, is fully educated, uh, the Pro Eagle uh, Phoenix Jack is a CO2 powered jack. So right. there is no crank, there is no uh, hydraulics or anything like that. The, high, the, the way it works is that you, it comes with four uh, CO2 canisters, small little ones like one ounces or whatever. Uh, they look like a paintball uh, gun canister or something like that. A small one. A small yeah, one, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, like for like the pistols and whatnot. Um, and it comes in a case and everything, and it, and it looks, it presents well, it stores well, everything like that. And then uh, you would just connect the CO2 canister to the input of the jack, open the valve. It then extends the jack up and lifts your vehicle, uh, and then you would close the jack or the valve. Um, and then once you're done doing your repairs, you would let, open up the valve and let the, the CO2 from inside the jack out, letting your car down on the ground. Uh, the nice thing about the power tank using the, um, the 20 ounce shot, uh, bottles, uh, those look like a full size paintball tank, uh, except for their like scuba grade, they're highly rated, uh, tanks that are high quality. Um, they have high quality valves and high quality fixtures on them. Um, they have billet. Uh, valve triggers and everything else that comes along with it, braided hoses. Um, and then that unit, you would connect to your jack instead of the little the little shots, uh, which you cannot reseal. So if you're using only half of it, you'd have to leave it on the hose with the valve closed and hope the valve doesn't open up if you want to conserve that CO2. Yeah. With the power tank, uh, you have a full tank full of CO2 to then utilize. You have a valve that only triggers when you pull the trigger. You can unmount it, compact it all down into a case or whatever you're doing, and then be on your way. And they come with a dual kit with a mount. Uh, that's what we ran on on the Razor on the BDRs. It worked great. Um, blew out the clutches with it. You can get the air nozzle for it. Uh, if you get the bigger tanks, um, they have like some... Um, uh, multiple like a gallon tank or whatever it is well they got the big mac daddy ones for sure right you know? and a lot of jeepers use those Absolutely. um but those ones are actually rated for air tools so you could actually take one of those full tanks with you and uh, uh impact hammer or a driver or anything you want to bring with you and you actually use those tools on the trail there's a whole lot of ugga dugga in that tank no question for about sure it. and yeah. you can just go get it refilled at a local gas supplier or the small tanks the these power shots um you can get those refilled at like your local uh, general store right. or hobby store, things like that. Well, from personal experience as well, like I, you know, when I was a kid, like late, uh, late teens, early twenties or something like that, I would play paintball a little bit here and there. And I've seen some of those tanks explode when they see temperature variants. I've run the power tanks at 10 degrees all the way up over a hundred degrees. Never had an issue with anything. Ever. No, they're super durable. Yep. They're the, the the actual bottles themselves are a lot thicker and a lot higher quality than um, the little stuff you'd buy at home at Walmart or, or wherever. So, um, to move on to my picks that complement each other, uh, we've recently seen the uh, GoPro come out with the GoPro Hero Ten. Um, as somebody that utilizes action cameras and what they do, uh, GoPro is obviously a part of my equipment haul to events and things like that. Um, and I still run um, a few different uh, GoPro Hero 7 Blacks. Um, they've done great for me. They do, they're do. they super reliable. They work awesome. The image quality is great. Um, and I've been telling people over the last few revisions of GoPro to hold off, you know, wait till the, the next version of the next ecosystem comes out because you don't want to get stuck with something that's going to change the next year. You know, you want to have all the mounts at work and all that stuff. Uh, the, the Hero 10 just came out. And that seems to be the kind of the bee's knees, the the trigger to, to upgrade. So if you've been holding off on Go, GoPros and, and you're looking for a new uh, setup, uh, the new GoPros are, are definitely something to look at. Um, but in just the general ethos of GoPros, um, my first uh, pick, if I can get my hand on the trackpad here, uh, was to look at the ways to mount the GoPros. And something that I found as a huge solution this year for me was the RAM mounts. So RAM mounts, uh, everybody's kind of known them for uh, mounting their cell phones to their dashes or um, you know equipment on boats or whatever. Really, really versatile. Yeah, a super nice, convenient ball mount system. And they have different versions of ball mounts. They have the one inch, the one inch and a half, um, things like that. So they have uh, a full line of GoPro accessories. And uh, the way it works is you have a mount with a ball. It goes into an arm. That arm squeezes on balls on both ends. And then uh, we'll take you uh, kind of put your equipment wherever you want to kind of mount it, whatever angle it is. You're not limited to a hinge or with the GoPro mounts um, that you work with. Typically, you're limited to kind of an XY axis only, uh, whereas the ball mounts will allow you to, to maneuver that wherever you want. Um, 
they're super secure, super reliable. They don't bounce around like the GoPro mounts do and all that stuff. And I kind of found them super handy this year in everything that I was doing. Um, I can insert a video here where uh, Brandon Raddick took the <clears throat> Addiction Power Sports uh, Razor over uh, Huckfest in Utah and, and rolled the car right on top of my mounts. And the mounts were exactly where I left them with no problems, uh, even through a violent rollover. So um, what I found also really convenient is I teamed them up with the actual official GoPro Jaws clamp mount. Um, that one is uh, retails for about 50 bucks, but you can find them on sale at different vendors. Um, but if I were to uh, show you this guy here, uh, you can see I have the uh, GoPro cage here. I have the Ram ball mounts here, and then the actual official GoPro clamp uh, at the bottom. And what that does is it allows you to use the Ram mount in any of the official GoPro accessories. So if you have like the flat mounts and flush mounts and bar mounts all over the car, then the Ram mount becomes universal to all those. Uh, but the nice thing about this is that it has the clamp. So the clamp can go um, up to, I think, a one and three or one and three quarter to a 1.8 inch bar. Can't quite do a two inch bar, um, but it's nice and tight. It'll hold itself on there. You simply just undo the wing nut and the whole thing moves around to be positioned wherever you want it to be. And I found that super useful for getting the cool shots that I wanted um, this year. And here's an example of the GoPro mount, uh, the RAM mount on the GoPro bar mount uh, clamp, which would be more of a permanent, uh, not on the fly type thing. But um, they both worked great and they were both worked awesome to get me the shots I needed this year. Awesome. So uh, what's, uh, it looks like we both have uh, one one more pick. Uh, my last pick is in, is a little spendier, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more aggressive or ambitious. It is quite possibly one of the best aftermarket things I've ever done to my car. And that is to get its suspension tuned. And the MTS crew are as good as it gets. Best, you know, you hear people talk about the best in the business and I'm telling you right now, they've proven it to me. It, it'll be a, uh, it'll be one of the first things I do on every machine moving forward. Their entire team is a, just a wonderful stack of gentlemen that get the job done. They do, you, you can tell them exactly how you ride. You can go through step by step and we go to, when you go to their website, you know, the pricing is going to vary based on what machine you have, what kind of style of riding you do this, that, and the other, but there hasn't been uh, a modification on my car that I've done that has performed as good and given me the confidence the way that the MTS shock tune is done. And let me tell you, when you see these guys at events and they come out to a lot of events they love this stuff they live for this stuff they will literally hop in your car and go out with you they'll film you they'll, they'll they want they they truly want you to have a fantastic overall experience and uh it just it's worth every dime you put into it let me tell you because you the the power that you make the tire that you run is only as good as the, your ability to put it to the ground and, and you got tuned up in oregon right yep and I got both cars tuned in Oregon. Both cars. Yep. So the X the X three and the Pro. Yeah. And uh, then in Utah, you had them go out and t tune them up a little bit more, right? Yeah. You know, I, I put some miles on the X3. I put some miles on the Pro. And we, we did a suspension tune with one of the MTS guys by the name of Ned. Um we were going through a whoop section. The out. MTS guy. <laughs> uh, the MTS guy. Yeah, we, we went out and uh, uh, just basically just hammered on some pretty gnarly whoops out there, straight, turn, curvy, you know, and, uh, and like I mentioned in a prior show, I was doubling – doubling some whoops, tripling some whoops, the, the directional stability that this tune really helped with in, in regards to my car is worth every single penny. And uh, this isn't necessarily a stocking stuffer type no, it gift, isn't. and it it's isn't. not necessarily something you can just buy and have shipped to your house unless you're buying a spring kit, which would be amazing. Yeah. Um, but uh, Spring kit makes a world of difference too huge spring kits are, are a large majority of how your car handles and if you don't know the science behind it and you don't know uh how the rates affect your car and the car's weight and who's in the car um it's really important to understand that you have to trust the guys that have done the work and put the time in to figure those things out um so you could buy a spring kit for your uh partner's car um it's going to be roughly around 900 bucks um but uh this is something that i would be more inclined to say is more of a um a permission scenario. <laughs> well, you know, and the other thing to consider too, though, is there's so many things that are in that price range. You know, there, there's there's tuning things that you can do around 900. There's there's tires and wheels that you can do around 900. Um, 
audio that you can do around 900 in terms of what you prioritize you know i'm not going to get preachy or anything like that but let me tell you dude i ride i ride you know i ride the car i'm hard on the cars and you need the car to be able to not only handle it but to work with you and your driving style and and there's certain things in the aftermarket that aren't going to help you very much in terms of that overall experience the suspension it's unbelievably critical as somebody that's married and takes my partner out on the trails with me as much as I can. Um, you can say wife. <laughs> I did. I said I'm married. You said partner. Oh, yeah. I was being too uh, political. You've been watching correct. too much CNN lately. Oh, God. Anyways, so as somebody that's married to my wife, uh, who identifies as a You're female. married to your wife? <laughs> uh, the uh, conversation that a lot of times is it's too rough. It's too bumpy. It's too whatever. I want this to be more comfortable. And, uh, and so me as an aggressive driver i wanted it to be a little more stiff a little bit more um able to handle the big whoops and the big hits and the big g outs and stuff like that but that comes at the cost when we're talking about stock shocks the way they come from the factory you have to give up something to get that back and so uh when you go to the plush side then you're giving up some of that freedom to hit bigger things and hit things faster and so this is one of those compromise things where you and and your partner can be actually on the same page of I'm getting more capability to do what I want, but at the same time, I'm giving you the freedom to enjoy the ride versus have to put up with the ride. Yeah. And in in terms of the pro, uh, the pro is the majority, the one, the car that I use the majority of the time recently on some of the mountain excursions and the pro and start stock trim rides, it rides okay. You know, it's undershocked. It's a 2.0, 2.5 Walker setup, which it should be a 2.5, 3.0 or 3.0, 3.0. And uh, they tuned that thing up, and I kind of made the analogy. It was essentially like going from a one-ton truck down to a Cadillac. Cadillac. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not even exaggerating. It was it, it was unbelievable. Change, change even the just, nature of the rig. Even just driving the Pro from Vendor Row to the short course, you know, I could de- I could even feel just that difference that it, if it rode completely different. Well, the first test I ever did at it was Co- Coos Bay, and I took it from the MTS trailer to the backside of the dunes, which is about five miles away, holding a latte at Warp Drive, and didn't spill a drop, buddy. <laughs> rode like a champ. So my last pick actually goes down the same path of how I was talking with that partner and the comfort, and that is a weatherproof blanket. Um, I think you actually bought one from our buddies at Superior a couple years ago, or maybe a year ago at um, uh, Takeover or, or yeah. Dune Fest or something like that uh, for your wife. Um, and these things, and the one I'm showing here on the screen, um, isn't necessarily like the one to go get or anything. It's just one I pulled up on Amazon. It was the first result. But the idea here is that you have a blanket for the passenger that always gets cold in this fall environment, the winter environments, um, where, uh, they want to be uh, comfortable again, right? The kids in the back seat or the wife in the passenger seat or whatever. Um, and these blankets, um, are nice. They're not too big and bulky or anything like that, but they're, they're a weatherproof, and uh, thus splash proof uh, way to cover up and also windproof so you're not getting all that cold wind uh, up into your clothes and so it's a nice way to stay warm stay cozy stay dry um, for the passenger that maybe doesn't enjoy uh, the muddy wet fast cold pace that a lot of us like to do right yeah, I've got one. It's super comfortable, man. Uh, as a driver, I don't get too cold because I'm kind of always wiggling around and stuff, <laughs> and you've got a death grip on the wheel. But yeah, these things these things are not uncommon to see this time of year out at the sand dunes. Yeah, I'm, and, and the nice thing is that you know you pull it out of the car, you can then lay it out for the kids and the wife to have a picnic or whatever, or just to sit on a dirty rock or a wet rock or whatever, um, and uh, enjoy the destination wherever that may be. So. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so those re- those retail around thirty to thirty plus dollars. This one that I'm showing is uh, looks like it's on sale for forty two bucks. But uh, the idea is just to have something. Yeah, my, mine was made by Chanel and uh, significantly more. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have a nice range of uh, gift uh, ideas here that go from you know thirty bucks up to nine hundred bucks, so or more. So uh, the the world's your oyster, and whatever you feel like is a great solution. Um, yeah, go after it and let us know what you think. What are your your picks? What are the things that you're getting your uh, friend or partner or whatever for the off-road experience and what are you enjoying? Yeah, and you know, we, we've covered it and uh, some of the gifts ideas that we're recommending here can get a little bit expensive, but I, I can assure you if you're going out and you're going and doing adventures, every dollar that you spend on a solution that gives you peace of mind was worth every penny. And that's kind of what we're basing this on. I mean, there's 
virtually everything that we're suggesting, there's also another solution. There's also a, something to fit within the budget. You know, if if you if you think that something that we recommended was a little bit uh, price aggressive, there's chances are there's another product made that that'll scratch a similar niche that's maybe a little bit more in the in your budget. With exception to the MTS. <laughs> <laughs> nobody's going to give you the value that the MTS will give you, and nobody's going to give you the value that the full throttle battery will give you. And uh, for a lot of these brands that we're mentioning, part of that experience is the customer service side of it too. Right. So uh, don't discount that. The long-term uh, part of that retail purchase uh, is a big deal. Uh, all these items that we've shown, for the most part, um, are high-quality brands with good customer service and with good warranties um, and that premium feel. So the, a lot of what we do is about the experience, and the experience involves your safety, your ability, your uh, the memories that you're making. So if you're able to fix things on the fly quickly, you know that experience is going to be a positive one, not a negative one. If you're able to go warm and comfortable, that's going to be a positive experience. If you're able to be go comfortably and not have to go to a chiropractor afterwards, it's just going to create better memories. Yeah, for sure. So uh, that's it. That's our 2021 holiday UTV gift guide. And hopefully we found something for you and your partner because a lot of times we buy one for someone else and we buy one for ourselves. So it's usually a, a mutually beneficial purchase. Yeah. And as far as uh, the holidays go, I want to, you know, Everybody enjoy themselves. Stay, stay stay safe out there. Hopefully you're getting to build some memories. But uh, 2021 was a very, very unique and really cool year for us, man. We got to go do – if you start it in the late 2020 when the events started to come back online because a lot of those events that got canceled by COVID got moved to the fall. And our 2021 encompassing experience kind of started in October, uh, September, maybe October of uh, 2021, then went through – or I'm sorry, 2020, and then went through 2021. And we got to see a lot of really cool people, a lot of uh, a lot of enthusiastic faces. There was no shortage of people that came up to you and I at events, wanted to shake hands, take pictures, talk shop. And that just means the world to me. You know, it, it's really it, it's really cool. I love nothing more than hearing about people's positive experiences in this hobby because, you know, you and I do this because we love it. A hundred percent. And it, it's so cool to kind of share our experience with you guys. And it's very, very cool. It's very rewarding to uh, get out there, see you guys, ride with you guys. And we hope to see you in 2022 as well. Yeah, we got lots of big plans for 2022 um, from the events to the rides, to the content, to everything. Uh, there's just an, an endless supply of ideas and uh, we're excited to see what we can execute on um, next week. Look forward to the holiday sales guide. Uh, we got a lot of awesome brands participating this year. Uh, so if, for those people that don't know what that is, that's our it's going to be our third annual holiday sales guide where we take all of the Black Friday deals, all of the Christmas deals, all of the New Year's deals, all those things and bring them all into one place on our website at sidebysideguys.com where you can go and see all of the links to, you know, 15% off, 20% off, 50% off, free shipping, you know, all those different things for all the different categories, accessories and safety and suspension and all those things. So a lot of the people that we've talked about more than likely are going to have deals on a lot of these products and you'll be able to find those um, in our holiday sales guide. Yeah. Happy holidays, everyone. So until the next time, guys, join us here on the podcast, either on Spotify, YouTube, uh, Apple, Google, all the different places. Uh, and uh, until the next time, peace. Peace.